It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Trevor Ziders, the head football coach for the Point Skyhawks and coach 23-21. That was the final score on Saturday. A walk-off field goal for a homecoming victory, no less, there in Valley. Uh, It's an opportunity, by the way, as you get to stay alive in the hunt for an Appalachian title as well. But let's talk about the win on Saturday. Big victory for the program. Really was. um, You know, just the opportunity to show – what we're learning, the development that we're starting to see and the progress that we're making, it it was phenomenal. And to be able to do it on homecoming in front of one of the better atmospheres that we've had, it was really a neat experience. And I'm just so thankful and happy for everybody that was there. It was an emotional day and, you know, it, it really got people excited. I can imagine, Coach, and the emotions as it came down to the wire, too. Not only a last-second field goal, which, by the way, missed. You had an opportunity, a second opportunity. So uh, you get maybe an extra, you know, for all things being equal, get an extra second on the clock for one more opportunity. Tell us a little bit about the the final sequence. Well, you know, I, I really, once we got into that situation, and I told our coaches, I was like, if we don't get it, if we don't score on second down or we don't pick up a first down, we're going to run the ball on third down, and then I'm going to run the clock down, take time out. We're either going to win it or lose it off that field goal. And uh, so, you know, to to have Corey and, and Coach Phipps, that is, to have Coach Phipps call that time out to try to ice Logan, uh, I'm really appreciative of that fact, <laughs> uh, especially because it doinked right off the upright, and, you know, we would have gone home with another very, very hard fought, tough loss, but thankfully we got that second opportunity and, you know, he put that sucker right down the middle. It looked gorgeous coming off that foot. It sounded good, looked good. (laughs) And sure enough, it was true. So we're just really appreciative of that fact. And, And I mean, just really happy for our guys. They, they worked, they battled, they played a full 60 minutes, you know, the ebbs and flows, the emotions of the game going up, being up at half 20 to seven, um, coming out in the third quarter, barely touching the football at all. I think we had maybe uh, eight total plays in the third quarter. It was rough. And, uh, you know, being down 21 20 going into the fourth, but battling the entire fourth quarter and then to steal that opportunity at the end. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, I can't say enough about it. And to see the joy and the elation on faces, it was phenomenal. It, it's, you know, it's part of why you coach. You know, the game's emotional, but it, it's part of why you coach. And seeing that success, even though success is fleeting, seeing that success for them on Saturday was, it was really a neat experience overall but it wasn't just them you know the cheerleaders were into it the crowd was into it there were a lot of people that you didn't see them that emotional they were emotional saturday you know it got the blood going i know my blood pressure was up for sure but at the same time you know that was just a great opportunity for all of them and and they all shared in that opportunity and in that moment and that's something that's big not only for point but for the program and just as we continue to move forward so i'm really excited and i Super happy for Juan's lack. I mean, had he missed that sucker, I mean, I would have felt absolutely horrible for that young man. But thankfully, he got that second shot. And, hey, you know, sometimes that that forgiveness is what you got to (laughs) have. You you talked about uh, also the fact that they played for 60 minutes, which realistically, I mean, and it, it was from the word go. I mean, first play from scrimmage. Mitchell Gossett to Quintravius Teasley, 61 yards for a touchdown there. Gossett, by the way, 20 for 31 passing, 274 passing yards, and and a couple of passing touchdowns. Talk about his play in leading the team through those 60 minutes. Mitch is just – Mitch is really growing up. Um, He has matured so much this year. He's done the things we've asked him to do. Um, He's protecting the football immensely well. I mean, that's the other side. Zero turnovers on Saturday. If we turn the ball over, I don't know that we end up being in the the position we were in. Um, But, yeah, I mean, he's making the right reads. He's putting the ball where guys can make plays. But not only where they can make plays, but they can make plays after the catch. 
There's a lot more catch and run this year than we've had in the past. Um, and it, it's really starting to show. And I mean, yes, Quinn's his favorite target. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, another 109 yard, you know, receiving performance. He, he's done a heck of a job this year from the receiver perspective, but Mitch's leadership is what's really helping us go. Um, that maturation process, it's taken longer than I think any of us would like. Um, but he's really started to show signs of being the leader that can put the team on his back and they're starting to respond to him. Um, and that's important. And, and I mean, the, now that he's a senior and he's starting to understand it, everything's starting to come together for him. He's protecting the ball better. He's putting the ball in better situations. And all of that just goes to the young man that he's become. And it's maturity. When you're, We're not who we are at 23 that we were at 18. And he's starting to show those growth signs. And, and that's the best part for it. That's the best part of coaching is watching these young men grow up and become more mature and start to turn into young men. Because, yeah, they're they're – to me, they're still boys when we get them, but they're really starting to become young men and grow up and start to understand what life is. And that maturation process for Mitch has been really nice to see. We're visiting now with Coach Trevor Ziders from Point. The 23-21 victory for the Skyhawks over the Pikeville Bears on Saturday, keeping them alive in the hunt for the Appalachian title. And course visiting here on the summit I, I appreciate you watching today it's always a privilege to get to visit with coaches like this and i encourage you if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel it would make uh it make us very happy we and we enjoy things like that coach the defense too let's let's talk about that for a moment you talked about the fact you're up 20 to 7 at the half which holding pikeville to seven points in the first half i think is a statement also holding pikeville out of out of the off the scoring column in the fourth quarter is also a statement as well because this is a strong Bears offense. Talk a little bit about the defensive performance and what that meant. Well, uh, honestly, cannot say enough about how those young men battled. Um, we knew going in it was going to be a challenge. They had averaged over 400 game, yards a game uh, every game I think since they started AAC play. Uh, we were their fifth of the six that they have. Um, Lee Kirkland, phenomenal quarterback. I'm going to be glad when he graduates and finally moves on for good. Uh, that, that young man is got a heck of a, a, just a heck of a quarterback. Um, they're running back Amon Williams. That kid could run the football. I mean, he was averaging over a hundred yards a game, uh, in AAC play. And the week before, I think he ran for 260 and three touchdowns or something. And he was catching the ball out of the backfield. To be able to limit that offense, I was really impressed. My defensive coordinator, Kenny Lucky, did a phenomenal job putting together a game plan. And we made them do some things that I don't think they wanted to do. Uh, it was a lot more dink and dunk than, than what they're traditionally used to. I think they more normally have some more explosive plays. Um, but we were able to limit that. And, yeah, if you would have told me that we were going to cut their scoring in half, I would have said, okay, that's a good day for us. But that's what we did, and, and it just goes to show. I mean, um, holding him under 300 yards passing when he had been averaging over 400 was gigantic. I mean, the, the running back's been having big days. So just all in all, it, I can't say enough about those, those 11 guys. And they played their tails off. I mean, Caleb Wade, I, I know a bunch of people have seen the clip, but he the one pass, he lays out like Superman. He's flying through the air for the pick. And, I mean, it was just – it was a phenomenal catch. Um, Kerr Thomas, a senior, goes and picks off the last pass that he throws in the game, which really, you know, if we, he doesn't pick that off, I don't know because we don't get the ball back potentially with no. as much time, et cetera, plus better field position. But those two plays were so gigantic in that game, stopping drives and killing momentum. And then cares it gave us all the momentum in the world. And it was this feeling that when Care picked that last pass off, I even said, I was like, we're winning this game. I said that to myself. I didn't tell anybody else. I just said, we're going to win this game. And sure enough, we, we drove right down the field, got the opportunities. And, yeah, I mean, you already alluded to the fact that they called that extra timeout, thankfully. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, it just it worked out and, and everything played right into our hands the way we wanted it to. And uh, 
if it wasn't for the effort that those guys gave for 60 minutes, it wouldn't have happened. And we, we knew that they were going to move the ball some. That they're too high-powered not to. Mm-hmm. But it was just a, a great effort by them all day long to just continue to battle and make the plays that they made. And they made key ones. We had several fourth down stops. They were three of seven on fourth down. Getting off the field those extra four times, that's phenomenal because they only punted twice in the game. I don't think Corey likes to punt often anyway, but, you know, just those extra opportunities to get off and make the plays, it was really big and it was important. And I can't say enough about those guys. I mean, Jakari Nobles had probably his best game of of his career so far. Uh, Being a sophomore playing the nickel safety for us, he ended up with – like 13, 14 tackles. Um, Caleb Wade, of course, like I said, had another day, eight tackles. TFL has a pick. Uh, both linebackers, Ethan Benz, Logan Slegel played well. Unfortunately, Key Larkin got hurt during the game, and we'll see how he's going for the rest of the year. But, you know, um, but he ended up having to sit out the rest of that one. So it was hard having a gun down. But at the same time, I just, they, their effort, their energy, and the way they just attack it, I can't say enough about it. Their resiliency really is, is it's just, it's really starting to show. And I, I can't say enough about how these guys are maturing. You, you've mentioned that word maturing more than once. And I think with the word resiliency as well, and, and I'd like to, to talk, give you an opportunity to address that maybe just a little bit further, Coach, because the, the opening to the season, I mean, it presented challenges, and you were taking on challenging teams, including a Division II opponent as well, and uh, some of the tough, uh, you know, scheduling crossover there with the Mid-South. You opened the season 0-5, and, and that including the, the first game of the Appalachian schedule as well. Since that time, your team's been 3-1, and one, and really it just feels like a different trajectory right now. Talk about the perseverance of the team and, and with what you mentioned, maturity and resiliency. So the big part, and it was funny that that you bring that up because I told the team last night, I said, this is a life lesson and resiliency is a life lesson. Things aren't always going to go the way you exactly want them to go or the way you want them to start. But you can't just stop because if you stop, you give up. That's the only time when you quit is when you fail. We haven't quit. And we continued to work each and every week. We've continued to battle. We've continued to try to get better as we worked through all this. And as that has happened, we are starting to see more and more positive results. Mm. You know, yeah, we lost to Bethel 20 to 6 or 20 to 7. We had opportunities in that game, didn't end up capitalizing. Yeah, we played Lindsey Wilson tough, but, you know, then people say, well, that's a moral victory. No, at the end of the day, it's still a loss. You know, I'm not a big one for moral victories. Then we ended up on the road at Davidson, you know, playing a, an FCS school. And early in the third quarter, we were in that ball game. We're down 14-12 every opportunity. Now, as, as things went, we got down a little bit in regards to our depth later in the game, and that, that made that a little bit more challenging. Um, but, you know, there. And then we played Allen. Did not play our best football game against Allen. I thought we had some really good opportunity to, to potentially get that chip righted then, but we didn't play well. Um, and I told them then that we had to flip it and get it better. Then after Allen, uh, then we played Faulkner, and that was the end of our out of conference, you know, games. But and that was another one came down to the the last series essentially. Um, defense got the ball back. Offense had to go score for us to either tie or win the game. Didn't make it happen that night. And that's when you really started to feel some of the, okay, what these guys are talking about, it's it's the truth. Like there is the process. We got to go through it. We do need to mature. We do need to play for the full 60 minutes. But that resiliency is now starting to show up that you don't quit. You don't give up. And you just continue to work and fight and improve because where you start is never should be where you finish. And and that's been the biggest challenge. And then we got KCU at home. Luckily got that opportunity, took care of business there. Then we ended up going to Reinhardt. Thought we played well in some aspects, but we didn't play well in others. Came close, but dropped it because we didn't play in the, the mistake-free game that we probably needed to play to, to take care of that. Then we ended up on the road at St. Andrews and we didn't, play our best but we played well enough to win 
-hmm. And then this past Saturday, we finally put together that full aspect of a game. And now they all see that, okay, we've got to work really hard. There is no secret to winning because there was everybody be doing it, but you know, it takes a lot of hard work, energy, effort, and execution for us to be good. And those were the main things that I really went through and talked about with the team last night, but it goes back to that resiliency because if we had stopped, if we just said, Oh, we're not going to be there. We're not going to have this opportunity. It's not going to work the way we wanted to. We wouldn't be where we're at now. And the way I, the other reason I said that is because it's funny, you know, you start off 0 and 5 and, and you're sitting there going, okay, well, what do we have? What can we do? Where's this season put us at? And I'll never forget, I looked at them that the, the Sunday night after that in the team meeting and I said, look, I said, whether you guys realize this or not, this is crazy to say, but as an 0 and 5 football team, all the goals, Goals that you guys had set forth are still potentially in front of you, mm-hmm. which was win the Appalachian Athletic Conference um, and then go to the playoffs. And I said, those two goals are still potentially out there. And since then, we've gone three and one um, upset, Ryan, or uh, not Ryan Hart, but upset Pikeville at the time, um, who was in number one in the conference. They had beat Ryan Hart. Ryan Hart beat us. So we both had one loss. Now we just added to that and and knocked Pikeville off. So now there's a three-way tie at the top. And depending on how these two games go, you know, we see where it goes from there. So we got to take care of business, but it's nice to be in control of our own destination and our own destiny. And that's what I was telling the guys last night. It's what do you guys want this to be? Because you guys are going to decide what it turns into. And that will determine our destiny as a team. And that's really where I left it with them. And, and and I just said, we have to go 1-0 this week. I said, nothing else matters. We're not to next week yet. Don't worry about next week. Last week has passed us. We're gone. It is focus on the here and now. And, and that's really what the plan is as we move forward and prepare for union this week. All right, Coach. Well, I, I will uh, – which, by the way, I appreciate you breaking that, all of that down for us. That, that was a, a, a great synopsis of the season to this point. And – um, actually helped me a little bit. I I, I had, had left out the the D one opponent as well in there, but it's three been a challenge. One, yeah, uh, three three and one in there. Um, and you're you're only talking about Union Commonwealth, which that's your next opponent, and you host them this Saturday. Uh, we will be talking here on the channel about the fact that you need to win too. Just I mean, I'm not going to take away your speeches, but uh, that uh, in order for it to to work out the way you want it to. You need to win two games, and and you go on the road at Bluefield the final week of the season, and you're also probably uh, somewhat cheering for whoever happens to be playing Reinhardt that week as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, but Correct. Uh, yeah, a little little bit of a preview of, of trying to go one and zero then this weekend. Yeah, and and that is true. Um, we do have to win out if if we're going to have that shot at the playoffs, um, and if we even want to be conference co champs, um, we all have at least one. So if we went out, we control that destiny no matter what. And, and that's all I told him. I said, that's the biggest thing that we can do. We control us. We can't worry about what anybody else is doing. We control us. So um, as we continue to move forth, I mean, that's the main focus. And it's funny because, you know, everybody always wants to talk about winning, but winning is really a result of all the small details and all the work that you put in coming to fruition. And that's the challenge. And, and it's that focus of, okay, you got it done last week, but now you got to refocus again and do all of it all for another week. And then that success may be there. But as I told the team Saturday after the game, 24 hours to celebrate. As soon as that's done, got to move on. And uh, that, that's the biggest thing as we continue to move forth. But we're excited for the opportunity to play Union. They're a pretty decent football team. John Luttrell's done a very nice job with that team. And uh, I know they're going to present some challenges for us. Uh, they've battled us very, very hard the last two years. Um, we were we went there last year, played very well defensively, not so well offensively in that game, and they knocked us off 20 to 13. So I know this is going to be one heck of a, a tough knockout, drag them out, you know, slobber knocker of a football game because it, it's going to be some good old-fashioned football. Defense will probably be first on both sides and – 
you know, hopefully we steal some points here and there. All right, Coach. One more game then on that Alabama-Georgia line uh, for the regular season as the Skyhawks will be hosting Union Commonwealth. That is this Saturday. But for the moment, coming off a win, 23-21 over Pikeville and controlling their own destiny for the remainder of the season. Uh, if they continue to win, we'll see how this turns out. Coach Trevor Ziders, thank you so much for taking time with us today, talking about your season and this past win, this victory. We're going to follow you these next two games this season. We always do, and we look forward to, to seeing how you work. Success to you all, and thanks for taking time with us here on the Summit. Anytime. We we thank you for having us, and, and we appreciate you following us. Any support you all give, we really do appreciate it. I know it's big for not only NAIA football, but just small college football in general. So we really appreciate you taking the time to follow us and, and – giving us a chance to tell our story.